In the last two videos, I created the service teaser component for my website running in XM Cloud. The only thing missing is the icons related to my services. In this video, we have a look on how to utilize icon sets and how to build so your marketers can manage the appearance from XM Cloud. I'm currently working on the service teaser component that consists of tiles that represent each service that is offered by this company. We left the last video with a working component, but we're still missing the icons to be displayed. In the static HTML, we can see that the icons are coming from a library called Box Icons. As there is an npm package available, I can copy the install command from the npm website and I install it to this application. Next, I need to import the library to the index.scss of the services styles as they exclusively serve my service component. After saving the file, I see the icons appear. They are a little bit offset, so let me add some styles to fix that. After refreshing the page, the icons are aligned well. The icons are also missing some colors. Also that is handled with CSS. After adding the coloring, I can see the icons turn blue. However, as this is still static and we want marketers to choose which icon in what color associates with what service, we need to model this in XM Cloud. In Content Editor, I need to create the templates to model the content related to the icons. I navigate to Templates, Project, Company Dev, Services, and I create a folder for all icons related templates to keep everything a bit structured. I name it Icon Templates. Now I create the box icon template and I create the box icon folder template. On the box icon template, I add a section named data and I add the two fields required, the name field as a single line text and the class name field as a single line text as well. The idea is that we can pick from a list of predefined icons which gives us later on the CSS class name that we can add to the component. On the configure tab I assign a folder icon to the box icon folder template and I add the standard values. On the standard values item I set the insert options so underneath the box icon folder I can only create box icons and more box icon folders. Now I can duplicate the box icon folder to save some of the steps I had to do before. I named this box icon color. Actually, I should name it box icon color folder. I can duplicate the box icon template and name it box icon color. The fields of the box icon color are perfectly fine for this use case as well as I want to select a color from a list and use the respective CSS class name in my component. As the insert options for the box icon color folder template are still using the box icon template and the corresponding folder template, I need to change that. I want the marketer to select the icon and the color along with the other teaser information that is maintained on the service detail template. So I add another section named teaser icons and create a field named icon, which is of type drop link and a field color, which is also of type drop link. I also need to provide a location where I can find the selectable icons. This is done by a query, but I leave it for now like that because I need to create those data source locations for the icons and colors first. Therefore, I navigate into System Settings Project Company Dev Services. This is where currently my module lives. I create a folder named Service Icons Underneath, I need to insert from templates because I have not defined insert options yet. Remember, this option is only visible for admins. So I add a new box icon folder. That was a bit quick, so let me rename it to box icons. I also add a box icon color folder, which I name box icon colors. 
From here, I can use the insert option, so let me add a first color, blue. So the name is blue as well, and the class name is iconbox-blue. As I'm already annoyed by having to type the color name twice, I will add a default for the name field. Back to the box icon template, I add standard values to the box icon color. In here, I define the default for the name field. I use the dollar name token, which uses the item name as default for that field when an item is created. Same I do for the box icon template. Also here, I create standard values and set the name using the dollar name token as well. Now I can add the other colors. Orange, this is already so much easier. Pink, yellow, red, and teal. So let me also quickly add the icons. The basketball, sheet, tachometer, the layers, the player, and the arc. Now I can copy the item path to be used for the query in the service detail page template. I only need the path until the box icon folder. And I use slash asterisk to have all children of that folder listed in my drop link field. I copy that to use it with a color field, just naming the folder box icon color. Let's check if everything is set up correctly. When navigating to the service pages, I can see the teaser icon fields all the way down on my template. And I can select the icons and colors. Let's quickly do that for all pages. Starting with the basketball in blue, the sheet in orange, the tachometer in pink, the layers in yellow, the player in red, and last but not least, the arc in teal. Looks good. Let's continue with the app development. Back in Visual Studio Code, the question is, how do we handle drop link fields? JSS does not provide a dedicated type as it does for images or text or general links. To understand the data structure of the props sent to the component better, let's have a look on them. Therefore, I create a console log to give me an output of the props as string. When looking into the console output of the developer tools, I can see the whole data set that is available in the props. I can also see the icon field that gives me an object with fields name and class name. And I can see the same for the color. In my case, I want the class name values. In the service component, I can add the two new fields. For the icon, I want to drill down to the fields class name value, which I expect as a string. And for the color, it's basically the same again. Let me check if I can actually output those values. So the icon value should be addressed like that. Props, fields, icon, fields, class name, value. And my color is addressed with props, fields, color, fields, class name, value. In the app, I can see the class names displayed underneath the description. So that worked. But I don't want to output these values. I want to use them as CSS classes instead. So I'm using that odd single quote and curly brackets. And I'm adding the value of the color props here. Same I do for the icon. And I'm removing the old static class names. Save and check the results again. That looks good. The selected icons are now displayed with the selected colors. Let's remove the output again and the console log as we don't need that anymore. Let's commit the files we changed so far. 
First stage it, comment, implement icons for services component and commit. Before I push and also later merge the changes to the main branch, I want to see if my code meets the coding guidelines that are checked during the build by lint. So I navigate into the app folder and start a local build running npm run build. Not too many linter errors as it seems, so let's fix those. Seems the build is fine now and it passes the lint checks. I stage the file I adjusted, comment, fixing linting errors, and commit and push my recent adjustments. But we also need to get the new items in, so let me pull items from my Axum Cloud instance. Therefore, I run the command .NET Sidecore Serp pull, passing the parameter name or minus n to specify the environment I want to pull from. In my case, that is dev. You can find the configured environments in your user.json file in your solution. Seems I'm not logged in, so let me run a .NET Sidecore Cloud login first. Confirm. Choose my organization. Done. Now I can pull the items. Looks like there is an item that is not related to my services teaser, so I discard that for now. And I stage all the other serialized items. Comment serialized items for services component. Commit and push. In GitHub, I see my branch is already ready to create a pull request. Let's do that. And now we can merge the pull request into the main branch. Usually there would be someone to review it first, but in my case I do it myself. Now as I merge into main, an XM Cloud was set up to listen to the main branch and start a deployment when changes apply to main, we can check XM Cloud deploy and see if the deployment has actually started. That looks good. So we are not waiting for it to finish in this video, although it only takes a few minutes. That concludes the creation of the services component. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss further content from our Discover Sidequest channel. Leave a comment if you have questions or any remarks. See you next time.